Welcome to episode 84 of Let's Talk Geek, recorded on 7 March 2012. Get me my Spectrum payments. In the show, we talk about Diablo 3, again, because it's awesome. Blizzard, just take our money already. Give me the game. SA Spectrum issues and flat-rated data for Nokia smartphones. And the Mura Fold. Fold and unfold your map in one fluid, easy motion thingy. Like so. Thank you for watching and listening. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 84. This is your tech news, South Africa, except it's not just tech news. We talk about all kinds of geeky stuff. Cool. All right. Uh, first topic. Yes. First topic is Di- Tim's Di- pick. Diablo 3. Yeah, you finally got <laughs> it. I finally got my bit of key. And I have one huge complaint. Mm-hmm. Why do they want to take my money so I can keep on playing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, ooh, I'm bashing this table again, apparently. Um, I really enjoyed it. Really good. It looks like it's going to be an awesome game. Um, one of the better games I've played in a long time. I really, really did. I've, I've I'm been... slightly jealous. I still don't have a beta key. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, have you entered everywhere? I have entered in all the places. Okay. And I still have no key. Because finally we've got beta key competitions running in South Africa, um, which, by the way, that to me is alarm bells that they are this close to launching. Well, um, that they're <laughs> ramping up the beta test to do stress testing, and then they're going to launch. You know the other big alarm bell that went off? Uh, think, Amazon no. announced that they would be selling it, I think, the 16th or 17th of April. Oh, uh, okay. No, but there's always, a retailer always, you know, gives a date and then it's wrong. Yes. Um, so no, look, I know. This is it, Amazon. Which but means that it's soon. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the fact that they're predicting. Uh, there was a I'm retailer who, who said 2008, if I'm, like, back in the day, if I'm not <laughs> okay. mistaken. So. I remember oh, well. BT Games having pre-orders open about two years ago. Yes, for Diablo 3, exactly. I wonder if they're going to honor those pre-orders. Um, yeah, I have to. Anyway, but uh, I've been playing the beta for a while now, and um, it's been really interesting to see the iteration in the skill system. For example, they've, they've done a massive overhaul in the game, in the game mechanics, um, you know, across the board almost. It's, it's actually very interesting to see how, how deep changes they, you know, they can affect, um, you know, without actually changing the core game code. I never had to redownload the game. They pushed me a patch, and they, ch- they changed everything. They changed the user interface for the skills. They changed the way the skills worked, um, the way the skills unlocked. It, um, Apparently, it's this last uh, patch 13 was quite a big change. Yeah. Uh, they also changed the way artisans work. Um, like, there was going to be, I think, three artisans. Now they've dropped one. Um, and, yeah, I, I haven't really kept up with all the patch notes. I, I generally see what's new every time I log back into yeah. the game to play again. <gasps> One thing, are you, are you replaying a lot? I'm, I'm like now thinking, I've played through the ones. I've Do replayed I, it a lot mainly for review purposes. I okay. actually owe my gaming a, uh, a video review still. Um, I've got the video footage. I just need to edit it together. All right. Um, okay. So, yeah, I have been replaying it quite a lot to get a feel for the game so that I can write about it. I'm, I'm a bit worried if I replay it now, I'm going to get bored and the real game is going to come on. I'm going to go, eh. So I'm, I'm like now, kind of like, eh, I, I haven't actually played it. I've just been able to watch. But if, as I recall, Diablo 2... The beta was pretty short as well. And we played that for yonks. <laughs> I, I think we started getting level 10, 15 characters with, you know, in that first two areas yeah, of the first up, act. Just up to just um, playing Blood with, Raven. Yeah. Yes. But the with thing is, everything things. you do now, you're going to lose all that once they go yes. live. But so, even after that, well, the, the point I was trying to make was even after all of that playing, we still weren't bored. After true, that, true. I got bored after the first act, but that's that's I, just me. See, I just know myself, so that this is personal yeah. thing. I'm okay. like staying away. No. Um, okay. So then, interesting way to fold a map. Um, <coughs> I, I that's it's called the Mura fold. Yeah, that is one weird way. Very and cool. it's so awesome. For those watching, look how to feed. fold. I was trying to work out how you act, how do you fold it like that. Um, yeah, I, I mean the creases have to be made in a certain way, yes. and then literally it for the folder it should be for for the person using the map it actually becomes easy you just take it by the corners and you play it like a concertina I threw my you should be able to see it on screen now if you're looking yeah, at it for those watching the video feed you can see it on the screen literally just pulling the corners and that folds it out and folds it back in yeah um, and this was actually designed for solar solar cells uh, or solar panels something okay. like that oh. something with um, so, so solar panel, panel deployment, deployment out in space. It sounds all so they, they can fold it, and it, it is very engineering. So they designed it so the thickness of the the packaging is actually going to be as as wide as the the panel is, and then it just folds up perfectly to the square. 
Nice. So it's an optimized folding technique. Yes. So that you don't have to sit there and then you accidentally tear something and yes. Yeah. And again, those watching the video stream, there yeah. are some instructions. There, there's, there's a whole origami thing yeah. on, on, the, on the website, um, which will be in, in the, show the show notes. notes. Yes. I'm going to paste these links into IRC right now. Cool. That is brilliant. Um, also, it was done by Japanese astrophysicist Koyoro Moiro, designed uh, solar panels in space, 1995. Hmm. Very cool. From that into something else awesome that's come out recently, uh, Circuit Labs, build and test circuits in your browser. Um, Wait, what now? Full on, uh, I don't know how complicated, but you, you can you basically browser based, so there's no flash, nothing. So you wouldn't need an HTML5 browser. You go and you can put resistors in, power in, uh, capacitors, inductors, um, transistors, a whole bunch of other things, and then you go simulate. Nice. And, wow. um, can, and, and it simulates, do I get waveforms and stuff on, on the various parts of my circuit as well? I haven't tested that. I didn't, I didn't go that far into testing. But I know you can click on any point in the circuit and it'll give you the voltage. Yeah, that's Once you've done the test. Um, and they say for like school, school rooms and all the rest of it, you know, to, so the guys can actually quickly play and test and, and, and trial some things. It is just an awesome, awesome. And it's, you know, you just go on with your browser. Mm -hmm. Now, what's this rem what this reminds me of is a uh, is a talk given by a fairly well known uh, user experience guy. His name is Brett Victor. I've actually seen that. One. Yes, yes. Um, and and he gives a, a fairly interesting example of how people should be you know working with their IDEs. Um, and well, I mean, what is a circuit simulation tool other than an IDE for electrical engineers? So. Um, and so one of the, uh, I mean, he wows people with his um, programming IDE, which basically lets you write code and see the effects immediately next to it. And pause code and manipulate it and it's all fancy. But one thing he also shows is a circuit diagram editor. Um, or a circuit, mm. yeah, well, it's not just an editor, it's, it's a full-on simulation tool as well. And you can actually, he says, the problem with circuits is that we still represent it with symbols that were invented to be drawn on paper, in st you know, and, and we do this on computers. Why do we do that? Well, Why not replace that component? Um, in, you know, still show the symbol so that you know what you're talking about, um, but next to it, and replace the component itself in the circuit diagram with its waveform. Um, and and so he does this. Uh, it's it's a very interesting concept. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. Well, and I love his argument there. Essentially, I was actually watching that today. Mm. Very very oddly, um, is that. People who program and all build circuits, the ones that are good or actually have the simulation, able to do the simulations in their heads, are the people who actually end up being good at this. Yes. Where now by moving it out into the IDE, you suddenly bring a whole bunch of more people that might actually be able to see things and work differently, but you know, might not be good at simulating these huge circuits in their head that can actually go, yeah, but what about this? Mm -hmm. um, and you actually open up the fields to so many more people. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, th this actually extends because his whole passion is actually about mathematics and, and circuits are really nothing more than, than linear yes. equations. So um, the, the uh, well, they can be nonlinear, but let's not go there. Um, <laughs> the, but it's, you know, that he wants to do this for all of mathematics. So instead of representing things with these abstract symbols, you know, uh, uh, represent it with, with a new symbol, but that gives you all the information about what you're talking about, like a waveform. Um, cool. Very, very interesting. Right. Um, what's the name of that? I can't remember what... Um, the talk is uh, uh, by Brett Victor. I'm going to paste it into the IRC and it will be in the show notes. Cool. We'll add that. Just go check it out. It's actually very, very cool what he was talking about. Um, robotic B assembled in pop up origami. Um, I very briefly read about this. And basically, it's, uh, I think it's in my. I'm not sure who's doing this. Uh, one of the big universities. And basically what, the, what they're working out is how to fabricate miniature robots. Mm. In this case, little miniature bees. Yes. And then full assembly, it's basically it's multi-layered um, things. But using laser cutters, all the rest of it, it's, it's fabricated like we would do with chips and stuff. Mm. And it comes out with this little robot that uh, basically at the end it gets cut out. Uh, and then they can apply power and it pops out like an origami system yes and then you have a fully automated robotic bee look they're still working on some of the, the systems but this is actually how now to mass produce them Very so interesting. I remember seeing the story on CNET I wanted to put this in the show notes myself um and it does, I mean, it does look very interesting. I mean, it's so compact. They put a coin next to it to give it a, to I give you an idea of size. And it's, it's incredibly, uh, it's a very small piece of equipment. 
Yeah, I know. Very but once again, very, very cool. Um, so um, from that into more local news, today was a big news day and Monday was a very big news day. Let, let's start with today. So today, Nashua Mobile announced a, a new da- mobile data offering. And, and it's specifically aimed at smartphones and specifically aimed at, at Nokia smartphones. And uh, we've been looking forward to this since Why last Nokia week. Why Nokia smartphones? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a question that wasn't really answered directly. So perhaps I'll just give you the information that I have on the partnership they have with Nokia. Um, in the presentation, they said that it became obvious that they needed a device partner in order to make this idea work. To, to put this in perspective, National Mobile is not a mobile network operator in South Africa. They sell on... A other net network stuff. So Celsi, um, MTN, Vodacom, they carry packages from all these networks for their customers and just on-sell them. Um, so National Mobile launching an offer of their own is, is a very strange thing. And so what they needed to do was get a commercial APN. They couldn't just use a normal corporate APN. It's against the terms of use to, to do what they've done now, yeah. as Hoha yeah. learned the hard way. And um, well, well, well te- technically, apparently, it wasn't at that point against the exact terms of use. I guess, anyway. yeah, fair enough. Yeah, let's, let, but that's, a, not whole, go into that's that. a whole other discussion. So they've got this commercial APN, uh, which you pay for by megabit per second, as you do for for normal capacity, and on you know on this you know pipe that they buy, effectively, they can build a product, and um, and so uh, I asked them about the nature of the agreement. And what other devices, you know, we can expect to see it on. And they said that they've got a six-month exclusivity agreement with Nokia. I so, see. I missed it. So you can only use it yeah, on the Nokia that, phone. That, that's yeah. in the, yeah, and that's, that's in an article. That's in a follow-up article I did. Okay. Um, then the bandwidth limits aren't going to hurt that many people. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, not, not, for a, not for a while. Well, I mean, Nokias are still incredibly popular phones yeah. in South Africa. Um, so there are a lot yes, of people that this will be available to. A lot of the stuff to. you can actually do on it is limited. It's not quite to the full extent. Yeah. It's not iOS or… or yes. And to be, to be specific, this is not available on the Lumia range of the devices. This isn't available on Windows Phone devices. Um, this is only available on Symbian devices. So Symbian, I mean, Symbian remains a powerful platform, even though I yes. don't like the user experience. Um, so, I mean, you can do a lot of stuff on Symbian. Oh, no, you missed this out. Just but general, the general usage and data usage is not as heavy as a smartphone. Yeah. And also so they were asked what, the av- what they found the average usage to be, and they said they found the average usage to be 75 megs. Now, they've put their fair usage limit at 100 megs, 15 megs more than the 75 meg average, which isn't much considering that they followed that up. They didn't fall into the same trap that Telcom, say, did a couple of years ago when they said that, you know, people don't need more cap. They don't need uncapped because their research shows people don't go over the cap. I mean, it's a bit of a self-defeating yes. argument. They didn't fall in that trap. They, they actually acknowledged that the second you take the handbrake off on data usage, uh, it people spikes. People go nuts, yes. Yes, and, and I think MWeb also learned that. Um, so um, it, it's, uh, I think at least it's, a, it's an interesting offer, but I know there are dissenting opinions. Yeah. <laughs> no, look, yes. Right here. Uh, my thing with this, a couple, couple of caveats. I mean, one, you were telling me you limited that APN, so you, can never, you can't really move off. Yes. So let's say you not do temporarily. S- if you want to move off, you have to move off that APN. Yeah. Mm. So let's say you want to do that, and you do run out of your bandwidth. Now you you've hit the 160 meg cap. You know, 56 megabit okay, f- kilobits kilobit per kilobit. second. Yeah. Wow. And you're going, damn it! It's tenth of the month. What the hell am I going to do for the rest of the month? You can't then, without moving off the package, go get um, something else. Or well, saying you go on holiday, and that's normally when you hit this problem. You know, if you're in Wi-Fi area, generally you won't use that much, um, and you know, so there are limits in this, but if you are one of the lower use users, this is a great product to go get. Yeah, yeah. even, well even not that low. I know I don't go v- if I do go far over 100 megs. I don't go very far over 100 yeah. megs, but I do know that's also because I spend most of my day on Wi-Fi. So when I'm home, I'm on Wi-Fi. When I'm at work, I'm on Wi-Fi. At least most of the time, my Wi-Fi is a bit spotty at work. But most of my data usage happens off of the 3G data network. But I know as soon as I'm off of Wi-Fi, I'm going to be using a lot of data. Mm. And 100 meg <laughs> a, is never going to Another limitation that. to keep in mind is that you do not connect at the network to the network at full speed. So even no. though you might be connected at HSPA plus speeds, um, you, you, they, they limit you to a maximum of 512 kilobits per second down. Off yeah. the 
just from the start. From the start, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, this this is uh, when, when one calls this an unlimited uh, data package, you are really just referring to the usage portion. Yeah. It is very limited. But w when one charges 60 uh, rand I mean, flat rate, the, the more correct way I think is flat rated, which is what they use in their marketing material. Um, and But when you charge 60 rand for a mobile broadband product, I mean, one can't expect too much, not yet. No, I agree. And also, look, if you look at also the ban YouTube, no YouTube on this, so that's not that don't. Yeah, no YouTube. No I'm YouTube. also guessing no stream, no, no audio. No streaming. audio. So it's actually so geared no mainly Music. for uh, your tweets, your your mail, and all the rest of it. And those things at 56 kilobits will keep on working fairly yeah. well. Yeah, and it was actually an interesting discussion. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to name the person, and so I won't. But I spoke to a person at a network who said that they tested BlackBerry services, BlackBerry services specifically. They are heavily compressed, in fairness, at 56 kilobits per second. And, and they actually did it across then, uh, you know, for all the internally to test, you know, yeah. if it's possible. And they found it's quite usable mm -hmm. um, for, for basic email and messaging. Yes. When, yeah. you, when you're trying to load massive websites, you end up with a problem. Maybe sites are okay. Um, mm. So, and that's on 56 kbps. But the web isn't built for 56k anymore. No, no. Um, if you want to, and if you're running, you know, the Chrome beta on Android and you're loading proper websites, uh, you know, you know 56 k It's going to time out. All right, next thing, Monday, uh, which, which we were actually streaming. Yeah. Yes, uh, um, so that, that was very cool. So thank you very much to Let's Talk Network. And thanks to Mindset. Yeah, for, for streaming the ICASA workshop, not hearings, to emphasize, yes. um, on the new regulations for Spectrum. Um, so for Spectrum licensing fees, we should say. Now, that was... An interesting. That was an interesting uh, experience. Um, so, so basically, what happens happened is, is some time in the past. I, I, this has come from you know the, some point in history. I haven't really looked into the, the history as much because it, it wasn't really relevant. Um, but basically, it, it comes before many of the people that are now at ICASA, the regulator in South Africa, the telecoms regulator in South Africa. Uh, were there. And so these regulations were laid down. They were set to be enforced on the 1st of April 2012. And, uh, and so um, a, somebody at ICASA suggested that maybe we should do a workshop. Um, nobody had thought of it until then. Uh, and they did. Um, the, the workshop happens just a month before these fees kicks kick in. And people are, you know, there are a lot of unhappy folks out there. Um, because the way things are structured, um, the regulations are unclear in certain instances. And so ICASA has had to make a plan to try and help people yeah. to accommodate people in such a short pace, space of time. And people are unhappy with the way things with the way things are going down. Um, and so it remains to be seen whether that deadline will actually be met. Yeah, yeah. And, and what, well, um, the, I'm sure the deadline will be met, but there the, the are players with lots to lose uh, who, you know, who may not be, uh, uh, to, to, to name names. Telcom, for example, are going to sit with a spectrum bill of 922 million rand. Spectrum yeah, which bill. Which is... Up in, in the scheme of things, that is an order of magnitude difference from what they used yeah, to pay. They used to pay around 37 million. Why, why the big change? Because they've got a bulk national license uh, assignment or uh, assignments. And uh, ICASA says, and this is the, the disputed point, ICASA says they regard it as an area license, which is far more expensive than a point-to-point -point license. So if, if you've got a normal microwave link transmitting from point to point, that'll work out more expensive than a point-to-area, point-to-multipoint license, right? And so, um, but Telcom uses those licenses for point-to-point -point links. And so... Uh, in, and and uh, a lot of those, and also Telcom used to, uh, from my understanding, a lot of their licenses they haven't had to pay for up until now. They're not unique in this. Um, there are a lot yes, of guys who I've have come it. off scot-free. Yeah. Um, and so now all of a sudden they've got to pay for stuff that used to be zero rand, and they're also paying point-to-area licenses with stuff that's point-to-point. -point. And so ICASA has put a thing in place. Yes. Yeah, well, it's um, they, they're using it for point-to-point, -point, but the way that it was, so um, that, that it's actually given licensed. to them, that it's licensed to them is... For point to area. Well, use or it as you want. The, yes. the definite, yeah, it's use it as you want because it's bulk. Just Sorry, so us, just that, 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 was the, that was the benefit of it, the bulk uh, explain agreement. Explain what, what this normally is. It's like in Wi-Fi. If you put a Wi-Fi hotspot in your house, you can get to it anywhere inside the house. Yeah. Yes. So, so we've covered Telcom. And, and, and Telcom, I mentioned first and specifically because they have, I mean, they were just highlighted by ICASA and that 922 million Rand number sticks with you. They're not the only operator who was unhappy. Um, while we were sitting there, we heard the Vodacom, the Vodacom representative chiming in 
a many, lot, a many, many times, times. Um, and not just on this issue, on, on various issues. Mm. Um, Neotel chimed in where, where the regulations are unclear on things. And so I think the workshop was helpful. Um, it, it, uh, a lot of the guys commented that it should have been held earlier. Uh, Councillor William Stuckey conceded that it should have been held earlier. Uh, but and you can't cry over spilt milk. Uh, the fact is we can't turn back time. Look, so... I must be honest. It looks like ECOS is trying to do stuff at the moment. Yeah. So Certain people at ECOS are trying to yes. do stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. But th- th- this movement, for, yes. for the first time in a while. So not, well, a, not as much I mean, is happening as I want to The thing to is, happening. in terms of this movement, um, I think uh, the way I understand it and, and what people maybe don't realize because it's not emphasized, this would have happened. It might just have happened silently and suddenly. All of a sudden, ECOS slaps you with a massive bill. Court cases ensue, yes. debt collection, all kinds of mean things. Um, now everyone knows how much they're paying and why they're and, paying and, so much. They were actually and asked what at the workshop. Disputing. Um, so, I mean, if somebody wants to prepare to drag a car to court, <laughs> at least they've been given fair warning yes. now. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Um, Talcom once again talking about 80 megabits per second broadband possibly planned. Mm. I'm no. still on four. They're not talking about it, by the way. This was, uh, uh, they didn't want to talk about this. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> but th- yeah, it's I'm still on four. <laughs> so what is Where, this? Where's my 10? Well, I don't even. Well, okay, but remember that the, the telecom have, have long-term plans. Yes. So they've got. So they've what's got that for like three, the year 3000? <laughs> I think no, it's no, 2015, no, the, the, the 20, 2015, 2017 20. plans to roll out 40 megabit per second services. Yeah. And the reason for that is to drive content services. Mm-hmm. And so, do you know why? Is apparently 40 megabits per second is actually what you need to get DSTV to your house. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure really? that they're equivalent. Yeah. Sorry. So I think the idea is, and everybody sees it as, you know, the, the future is this content yes. delivery, HD content delivery mm. over IP. It's not really the best network to do this in. Um, so, yeah, a comment from the IRC is that Telcom are actually already rolling out these MSANs. They stand for multi-services access nodes. Yes. These are the things that they need in order to, to, to deliver what they call VDSL services or very high bitrate. And, and pretty much if I understand digital correctly, how, how they're services. doing is they run a fiber to the curb and then they put your… Put an MSAN your, down? Your, your mic- Basically, now you run into the box. I'm sure you've seen the telecom boxes. The wires run into that. And basically, what they're doing is that they're pulling the high-speed data bit closer and closer to this. So the copper bit gets shorter and shorter. But they're still not replacing the copper into your house because that's still quite expensive. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm also not sure. I mean, I think that there are technologies to be able to actually make use of that, uh, to, to, to uh, put that, use, use that copper to such high bit rates. But, yeah, you just need to make the... You just need to shorten that loop. Yes, you need yes. to shorten the distance, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so uh, by the way, uh, there, there's some more comments in IRC regarding the spectrum licensing fee thing. Just to mention, um, the fact is that Telcom and Neotel will, uh, from ECASA's calculations, pay more for their spectrum licensing. Whereas Vodacom if and they MTN... Do, if they do nothing if about it. If they do it, nothing about they it. They will yes. pay more. Yeah. Vodacom and MTN, if they do nothing about it, will pay less. So now they so have the Vodacom opportunity... Complaining more. Apparently, there are places where they pay more on the books. You know, oh, so it's yeah, sort of yeah. like they pay more for this link uh, than they did in the past. But then in a different place, they save a load more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of, uh, it's the net saving. But they have the opportunity to amend their licenses. Yeah. They, they have been given that opportunity to amend their licenses and to probably save a lot of money. Yeah. But they'll, be, they'll, they'll have to give bandwidth back. Yeah. The, the yeah. thing is, I see, I see both sides of the argument. I understand why operators are unhappy with the suddenness with things which are done, with the lack of consultation things uh, were done with. Um, and I also see ICASA's side of the coin, which is we need to use Spectrum more efficiently. Yes. It is a precious resource. Um, the status quo cannot be maintained. Um, maybe there they, they are obviously better ways of doing things, but sometimes the best way of doing things is just to do them suddenly and and sort out the growing pains and move forward. Yes. Um, well, at some point you need to just start doing something. Yes, yes. And and there's n- almost never a win-win situation, and it's almost never a lose-lose situation. It's a it's a everybody's actually unhappy about it situation, if, but we need to if make everybody it work. slightly unhappy. You've done the correct job. <laughs> <laughs> you can never make everyone happy. So anyway, yeah. MRT App Inventor is back. Yes, it used to be. It used to be, as far as I remember, Google App Inventor. Or which actually Android was an Inventor, evolution something from like that. a MRT project. Oh, which yes, then Google yes, that's take great. Over, which took they took over. over and then decided to scrap it 
uh, but not scrap it. Then they gave it back to MIT, and now I believe it's been open sourced. Yes. Um, so it is now back, and the mixer actually played around with it a little bit. And, and created and a made a meowing... Cat. And, you know, purring. It's a purring, purring. It's a purring yeah, cat. If, if you click on the picture of the cute kitty, it goes... Purr. <laughs> well done to the mixer. I think that the mixer will make millions and should donate the proceeds to the running of Let's Talk Network. Yes, absolutely. Woo, fun. But <laughs> it's there. It's, it's fun to play with. Uh, and I think if you work at it, you can actually do some, some serious app development. The big problem is those you can't export any of it. So what they're saying oh, really? is as a way as an intro, you can export the app. You can't get the code. You can't export the code and say, okay, now I've done all this stuff. I now wish to grind away in the background to mm. do some more fancy mm. stuff to it. Can't you just reverse engineer the code? You would have to take the APK, reverse Decompile it, and if you it's do, signed. you probably won't be decompiling it to actual Java code. You'll be putting it into some other scripting okay. as, as a language. tool to make a lot of people's lives easier. It would be easy, quicker to rewrite it. Yeah, more than likely. Um, I also the, don't like reading and writing machine uh, generated code yeah maybe it's just me um, what they do say is like for schools and stuff this is very awesome yeah. because it kids, gets kids interested in programming and designing these apps programming for mobile devices which is pretty cool in a very simple way yes so you know good project I'm, I'm glad it's, it's back it's back and now hopefully it's under development again so yes. we'll see some more stuff going in there and hopefully we'll get the export yes no, I think we do at some point. Um, this is a random piece of science news. Yeah, I just happened to come across it. I thought, <laughs> woohoo. Yeah, yeah. So this is a random piece of science news is redheads feel pain differently from anybody else. And so I put in brackets there, Angus Set. It's a reference to, oh. to a series of books um, <laughs> by Jacqueline Carey. It comes highly recommended to people above the age of 21. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, and in fact, what they found is that they redheads have a higher tolerant pain tolerance for apparently stingy and burny pains, but cold is more intense. Oh, I missed that bit. I, I didn't read further than that. Oh, yeah. So the fiery redhead says something. Cool. They're huh. used to the fire. Huh. They, they, they're born with fire resistance. Fire and, resistance and, plus ten. And cold. And cold and vulnerability. Cold vulnerability. <laughs> Those D and D books mean something. <laughs> <laughs> it applies. <Yeah. laughs> um, in in other news, which should have probably, probably gone with been one for for the app inventor, um, there is an Android Java IDE uh, was released. I think this week actually, and I've been sort of looking around, looking for something like it. And there are a couple of other options. Wait, um, before you go, before you go, Android it runs. It on runs. Okay, yes, yes. It is an app for Android. It is called Aid. Uh, A I D E. And there is a link in the show notes. Uh, it's on the Android market. It is free, which is, I, I think that's just brilliant. Um, runs on your Android device. So I've actually got it on my transformer right here. Uh, and it's a fairly decent IDE. Have your code on there. You can do your normal Java code. It has code completion. Uh, you can do the full layout and then you tell it to run. And it, it actually compiles and installs the app on the Android device Very itself. Cool. Very so you cool. can code for Android on your Android. So, I don't know if I'd be able to do that on like a Galaxy Nexus yeah, screen. Yeah, on, on a phone, I don't think I don't so. Think you can install it on phones. It's designed, you, have, you can only install it on, on tablets. tablets. Okay. Plus, I haven't actually tried installing it Comment, on the Nexus. Comments, from the, comments from the IRC are that this is apparently two day old worth news. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm, I'm so sorry. Yes, but we only I did say this week. Every, every week. week. Yes. Uh, I did say it came out this so week. So, the, the, the news will be about a week old, guys. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, that's there, which is, uh, I think that's a cool step in the right direction. I've been looking for something like this and that you haven't been able to find a Java IDE. You could code in stuff like Ruby. And um, I know there's scripting layer for Android as well, uh, which does some Python and a couple of uh, yeah, probably PHP, Perl, yeah, no. PHP maybe, uh, a couple of other scripting languages. Uh, but also those don't have all the hooks that you need to get into the Android API. You know, they have some of the things work really well. Some of the things just yeah. suck. And what's nice about this is it actually installs directly in your phone. Because, look, the, the yeah. obvious solution to all this stuff is to actually have a web-based version. But that's then online. So you have to be connected. Google Chrome-based version that you can download <laughs> the, the stuff. Okay, okay. Um, but then you push to a remote server to compile for you. Yes, so, uh, and that's the, the one thing that I'm also missing for Android, and I, I might actually look into doing it myself, 
is a proper Git client for Android. If, if anyone knows of one, please we, let we, me we're know. We're going to be talking about Gitto Lite later. Gitto Lite, uh, but that's not for Android. No. Okay. So uh, I know there is a Git client, but it is a read-only client, which by, by that I mean you can only pull stuff, you can only pull code, you can't actually push out. And it's not free, but I think it might be open source. Okay. So yeah, right. that one. Google Play. Indeed. Google so, Play, which is kind of... It sounds like they're trying to replace market. Yes, they're, they're trying to get all of their content uh, distribution platforms. So you have music and books and movies. I thought I'd... Be, I mean, you know, if you had access to all that stuff, you bought it all from Android Market anyway. Yes, no, not but you bought books. it from Android Market, which is the problem. It's all bundled under the umbrella of Android, which uh, is not where they want to go. So they're now putting it there. It's kind of a rebranding exercise, uh, putting uh, it under the Google moniker. Uh, so it's like uh, Nokia changed from Avi Music to Nokia Music. Also, but Google Music, you buy from Google Music. Yes. Which was a separate but then app. Yeah. that goes yeah. to your Google Music library and you can download it to your phone. So the idea is now with the Google Play is that this is where you go for all your Google yes. content. And then those things, uh, I think there's another link as well there, an Ars Technica link, the guy did a hands-on. So, um, so, so some of the things sync across. I, th I hope the idea is that your content syncs across various devices. So you can start watching a movie uh, on, on one platform, so say on your Android device, and you can continue watching it on your Google TV one day, and it'll hopefully sync across. At the moment, mm. it doesn't. It stops. So you can start watching it in one place, stop there, start watching it in another, but you'll have to find your place again. Yeah, so okay. it doesn't so sync your position so the way the, Amazon does. With the proviso does. that Google has, to, you actually have to crack the Google nod and they must support yes. content in your region. Yeah. Whereas, uh, just on that as well, books do sync properly. So cool. it's pretty so much like what, what no, no. Uh, oh, Kindle does. So. Yes. But it does that. Music as well, still no unified, or not, not unified, continuous client, I yeah. think was the term. Can we buy books now? I don't think so, no. We can get, the, we can get it. We can get maybe get free, free versions. Uh, and if you kind of hack around it, you might be able to get the Android app. But I don't think that's available in South Africa either. So we pretty much have apps and games. Then, along with the launching of Play, remember they have some cool specials. Yes. So I've Once already... Again, if you've uh, cracked the nod. Anyway, yes. Well, in South 25 Africa, cent albums on Google Music yeah, 25 are useless to me. For those, but some cool games at least. You can get uh, stuff like Shadowrun and Dead Space. Osmosis, Osmosis HD, which is a brilliant game. Very good game. Fifty um, cents. That's I mean, really, that's what seven? three rand seventy five. Oh, yeah, three rand. So, just no, no, I bought a couple. Go wild. Yes, um, which I think is only for today. Is it only for today? I and then they, they have some more specials running for the next couple of days. Okay, so we'll keep on checking in in case they do, yes. like they did before, we they change Go every now, market.android.com, over at the top somewhere, they should, oh, yeah. or play. Uh, Google.com. Yeah, but it's actually a bit of a mission to actually give, because you actually get to play. Then you've got to click Android, or, or Apps, which doesn't take you to Apps, just takes you, oh. by the way, we do Apps. Then you've got to go <laughs> click, go there. And it's like, really? Why twice? I, I click there, just, just Take just me take there. me there. <laughs> so uh, a couple of suggestions from RSC before we move on to, to the next topics, just to quickly cover them, I think. So an interesting thing came out. Um, DuPont Telecom sent out a, sent out a warning today. Uh, that this is... This is what we call in the business newsjacking. This isn't quite a newsjack. This, this was actually, I thought, quite quite an interesting warning. So, like Kaspersky, for example, would send out a warning mm. uh, about new malware, right? So, uh, these guys warned that people would abuse their office phones to phone ATA numbers to give themselves free minutes <laughs> because uh, uh, the way ATA ATA is a special yes, right yes. that you, don't, you just have to receive a call and then you get free minutes. Um, so. <laughs> So yeah. the warning companies, beware, your, co your employees might be trying but to screw you. But you picked it up very get. quickly. Yeah, I know. But still, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's South African consumers always trying to gain the system. I love it. Um, then another interesting thing, it's a difficult topic to broach. <laughs> Externalities. Externalities, yes. Sorry, very uh, good. Uh, good. So. <laughs> uh, a difficult topic to broach, but um, Torrent Freak ran the news uh, this week that the scene, as they are known, uh, the people who, who rip movies and stuff um, and series and so on, are going to switch from the XVID codec to, to uh, X264 for video encoding. Um, so that was fairly big news and fairly contentious news in the scene, um, considering 
you know, the X two six fours. I think uh, I think it's got it's patented. It's administered under the mm-hmm. MPEG LA, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, XVID is obviously backwards for DivX. Yeah. So, um, but it's it's I think it's an open source implementation, uh, or at least a free. Yes. Uh, you know, Look, implementation. They're, they're all pirating movies. Yes. I don't think they care. No, they do care. They do care. This is why they've laid down a standard. If you're a part of the scene, you may no longer, if you want to be considered, you know, lead and whatever, yes. you have to be using X264 from now on, not XVID. Oh, because XVID isn't, but isn't X264 also based on H264, which is still patented? Yes, exactly. Um, so it, that is what I mean is, is that's why it's contentious, is that the patent issues around H264 no. As well, opposed to expert. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm going from the thing. They're pirating movies. I don't think they're going to oh, worry no. about the patents. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, they're going to go, what, what gives me the better compression ratio for better And video? that's exactly the argument, is that they, they feel that H.264 offers the better quality yeah. uh, and better compression. Which it does until WebM is a bit more widely supported and improved time. But apparently WebM is quite close. Yeah. So, uh, so <laughs> comments from RSC is <laughs> A, facepalm, and B, throw, throw away, away the DivX players. players. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, all right, next topic. Talking about that, sorry, I just mean to say a uh, very good tip. I was looking at torrent downloading programs, but for servers specifically, and I was p- previously using torrent flux. Yes. Torrent flux NG, which actually is a damn mission to install. Yeah. Giving me headaches, gearings. Eventually, I came across. Ah, what's it? Be- Not transmission. Transmission demon. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. I've web web client. I've played that before, but with the web client version. Yes, I never had to install it. I just played with the web client. Just install Torrent Demon. Yeah. Web client gets installed. Yeah. There's a simple text editor you edit. I, d- I don't like the, 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 the Torrent Demons, um, uh, the Transmission Demons uh, web interface as much as I like the other ones. But, I mean, I can appreciate ease of install and maintainability. <laughs> I, I like it very much so because when you select files, you, when you go select add file, you can add multiple ones in one go. Oh, okay. Uh, you can actually just click file, show you the file. And, and we use this to download uh, uh, Linux distributions. Yeah, 1204 came out last week. Yeah. And, and, one. and Vodo movies. I'm using it on my server. <laughs> <laughs> and Vodo movies. Yes. Uh, so Should probably cool. update my server. Sorry, it's just something. Um, and it handles magnet links. Yeah, yeah. And ah. uh, I've had to use BitTorrent. Uh, for those who don't know, Blizzard Entertainment distributes everything using BitTorrent yes. protocol. And so I was on a Mac, don't judge me. And I wanted, to play, <laughs> I wanted to play StarCraft. And, um, and the StarCraft downloader that Blizzard supplies wouldn't work. So I, I, um, you can output it in debug mode. I could grab the URL of the <laughs> torrent. <Yeah. laughs> and I would grab the torrent, fed it to, my t- to uTorrent, and just downloaded the files cool. manually. I st- then I had to hack it all together. It was a mission, but like, I got StarCraft working. In anyway. right. Legitly, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that was a key. I, I mean, to play StarCraft, you still have to log in with a valid battle net yeah. account. Yeah. Anyway, so finally... Uh, Flying swarms. Yes, finally, a use for swarm bots. Uh, I, I don't think a show has gone by where the, the universities haven't released a new swarm bot video where we've not had it in the kicker. Uh, Guess what we're having in the kicker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, swarm bots are awesome. But all they've been good for so far is making me nervous about Skynet taking over and killing me with swarm bots. Um, and so now uh, a, a, bunch of, a bunch of folks have got together and, um, put and come up with a, a fairly humanitarian, libertarian use for swarm bots, which is just giving people free Wi-Fi, um, in, uh, giving activists and protesters free Wi-Fi when communications get cut off. Huh. It works quite well because it's just you can get height. Yes. My main problem is power. Wouldn't it be u- better to use blimps? Um, perhaps. Uh, what's, less, what's, what's easier to maneuver, less costly to deploy, and easier to recover? That's, that's what would be my, one, like my three core design criterion. There are probably more. Well, swarm bots would be batteries, so you would have to continue to have the things landing and yeah. charging. Blimps need helium. Right. Yeah, but once they up, they stay up, and they use very little energy yeah. at that point. Yeah. 
Look, swarm blimps. <laughs> cool. Yeah, Sorry, that just, is, that just makes me, me think of StarCraft overlords. The, the thing about no. swarm bots is that you can maneuver them to go to get over the hot spots where you need connectivity quickly. And if you find yeah. you have a congregated people, you can actually pull them in together and give you better coverage. Yes. Yeah, I mean, because that Wi-Fi hotspot falls over. And, uh, and I think that was part of the design criterion is how can you f like most quickly, de you know, deploy infrastructure because de deploying infrastructure for anybody who's ever tried to do it. Um, I sympathize with you. Mobile network operators is a mission. Yes. Um, you know, getting all the environmental approvals, putting up the mask, putting up the antenna, configuring it, blah, blah, blah. So how do you do that in a mobile fashion, um, in a way that doesn't break the bank? And in a way that lets you move it quickly and bring in new cells quickly to serve the area. Out of curiosity, how big are these things? Swarm bots. We will show you quadcopters. Okay. Oh, those quadcopters. Yes. Quad -copters. yes. Okay, so not that huge. No, no. no. Okay. Yep. So um, that brings us to Gitterlight. Gitterlight. Tell okay, us about so that. So another thing I was doing, I was busy hacking away with Git and trying to get multiprocessing. And before I've been looking at Gitosis, which if you go to Git on the Ubuntu main they talk about Gitosis. for a very cool project. Fortunately, I found it's been deprecated, and the one that everybody's now recommending is Git Alight. And let me just give you a brief the, the, the problem this solves. Okay, if you Pitch just Git Alight, sell us. <laughs> get if you're just using Git and it's just between you and a friend, quite easy. You can share SSH keys, or uh, you know, if you're pushing uh, to lots of people, you can put a web server out and people can pull from you. Now you want people to lots of people to be able to both commit and pull. Normally, the way you have to do this, you would actually have to create users for each of those people, get all their keys up, put it up, but now they've got access to your server. Bad idea, because at some point, somebody's going to ma make it run. This one's much better. You install this program on your server, you give it a user. The guys send you their keys, and you just basically add the keys into this program. Um, and then you've got a simple config file, and you can say these users with these keys may pull or only read or pull push read or do a whole ton of things. Um, and it's horribly simple to configure. And to add new users, literally, you get the key file and you drop into a folder, add their name into the config file. And it users get to push those configs backwards and forwards. So you can even configure it on so your own you PC. So can, you, you can get your config file? Yes. And that's how you do it. You, you get pull it. <laughs> I love this. It is. <laughs> and you push it back. And then when you, as you push it, it applies it. Now, this, this also, uh, to, to quote Fried Roadkill from earlier, this is asking for a Yo Dog meme. <laughs> dog, I heard you like it, so I put git in your git so that you can git while you git. <laughs> but it's cool. Anyway. Go, go, go check it. If, if you work with lots of people using git, if you like at work and you go to repositories, go look at git a light. Cool. Awesome. That takes us to our kicker. So first one is an invisible Mercedes because no one wants to be seen driving one. <laughs> um, so <laughs> jealous <laughs> a little um this is actually quite interesting so um the the wait i didn't see this yeah it's is this like the james bond way um except well no I'm gonna say what they did was they Aston mounted Martin. a canon 5d mark ii on the one side mm. and on the left side they had a bunch of leds and so the camera would take in what's on the other side mm -hmm. and then the leds would display that and so Whoa. Yeah, so so as long as you're looking at the car from one side, it's almost invisible. Pretty much, you've created a panel. Yes. Yeah, a panel that takes input from a video, from a from a from a video source, and displays it on the side of a car. Yep. Holy crap, man! No, but there was those guys <laughs> doing it with material. They actually had the material that yeah. did that. Yeah, yeah. And they created these sort of invisible invisible suits, and it had cameras backwards and. Front and back. Yeah, yeah. That was that was interesting. I don't know how f uh, how. I mean, I'm sure that's been developed further now. Look, it's not nowhere near as good as this is because you know it's, it was a movable material. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was pretty damn. Look, if you're out in the desert, yeah, you're not going to see that. Material, you obviously have a lot. You know, you can make it a lot better. Yeah. Um, so. But pretty awesome. Very cool. Yeah, indeed. What would you use this for? Nothing to make tanks. It, so you know, drive it well. If you if your tank is only going to present one side to the enemy, yes. Um, you, so but generally, you would. So you just make sure the <laughs> tanks are parked in opposite ways, and then you build it all the way around. Sorted. And well, actually, you have to put the camera. Aren't you supposed away. to present front armor? So, like, I want to camouflage front armor. No. So, like, front armor I'm not looks like the sure desert how with this that is. turret sticking out. Anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can turn the turret. <laughs> with, with a little flower coming off the turret. Eh? <laughs> yep. Uh, and uh, because we do a, we seem to be doing double kickers nowadays, we have the obligatory quadrocopter video. Well, kickers <laughs> are anything cool, but, you know, 
are not that newsworthy. <laughs> <laughs> Quadrocopters are newsworthy. Uh, People need to take notes of these things because they are going to kill us in 20 years' time. Our, our over robotic overlords. <laughs> yes. They're going to turn us into cyborgs, little, little neurosurgeon quadrocopters turning us all into little obedient bots. Anyway. Fried Road cool. Kill makes a good point. You might not be able to see the tank, but uh, heat signature, guys. <laughs> Whoops. Spe especially if it's an Abrams with its massive flippant turbine on the back. Anyway, yes. <laughs> Look, we're solving one problem at a time. <laughs> yeah. You know, everybody always thinks, like, this problem doesn't solve everything in my life. It's like, no, but it solves one problem. Give me a while, I'll solve another. <laughs> Once I've solved enough, I have solved all your problems. Anyway, back to the quadrocopters. <laughs> Stealth tanks. Yeah, anyway, so these quadrocopters are playing the theme to James Bond. Must have. Yeah. It's, it's not exactly Bach. Um, not that Bach composed the themes to James Bond, but you get what I mean. I mean, it's not exactly... <laughs> well, it isn't exactly Bach. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's, it's no Liberace, but it, they get the job done. Um, yeah. So, uh, and this is more showing how, it, once you've automated the, the steps that these things do, what you can actually do with them. Mm -hmm. Have them play music. Yeah. I think we've had a musical kicker before where we showed OK Go playing music while driving a rally car. Um, this reminded me a lot of that. So if, if you're interested in watching people destroy instruments while playing an awesome song, go Google yeah. OK Go. I, I, and go watch it. Unfortunately, we can't play videos in the stream because, in the stream. because YouTube. Um, because copyright, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. We'd love to, but you can. But we have pasted them and they will be in the show notes. So go check it out. Indeed. And with that, uh, go, where can we find you guys? You can find me at mybroadband.co.za. Uh, I'm living there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I'm living there. Uh, I'm Jan Vermeulen. I'm a staff writer at My Broadband. You can also get me on Twitter at Jan VZA. You can also get me on Google Plus. Just search Jan Vermeulen and the one that says My Broadband under, under it should be me. Uh, and those are my, those are my social not, connections. Google. Hmm? Google Jan Vermeulen. Um, you might get some Dutch musicians and authors. Okay. Uh, so, no. You can try Pretty it. Cool. Yeah. Limit to South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Harry Vermeulen. Uh, yeah, also Twitter, uh, at Hawkey, Z-A, H-A-W-K-I-E-S-Z-A. -E uh, also on Google+. Plus. If you don't know, just try about.me forward slash Hawkey, Z-A. Cool. And you will see all my accounts there. And you've got a couple of apps. Got a couple of apps on the Android market, yeah. They're doing okay. What uh, are those? Uh, the, the one is Droid to Reader. Uh, recently got do? an update. It sends stuff, uh, web pages, and now any text whatsoever that you want to type into the little edit and send to your Kindle. Awesome. Uh, it works through the Send to Reader API, so go check out Send to Reader. That's also pretty cool. And the other one is Paste, uh, plain and simple text editor. That's a tablet text editor. Yes, but it works on ice cream sandwich, so you can actually use it on your Galaxy Nexus or your Nexus S or your whatever ice cream sandwich running phone. I'm busy investigating a possible way for notes to sync across devices. Okay, very cool. What do you do, Tim? And you? Uh, I do this Geek. Yeah. <laughs> All the stuff for the Listrook Network. You can find me on Twitter at Tim underscore Hawk. That's pretty much where you'll find me. Yeah. And you can uh, also find him tweeting from Let's Talk Network. Uh, sometimes, as well as the Let's Talk Geek. Geek. Yeah, generally uh, with a lot of them. <laughs> I'm behind it. Yes. Yeah. So they are, they are those Twitter accounts as well. Go like us on Facebook. If, even if you don't like us, uh, it's such a poorly named button. I wish that text was customizable. <laughs> Go click on the plus. It, it is actually. Apparently. You, no, you can just switch it to recommend. Like or recommend are the two verbs okay. available. Go recommend us. <laughs> and recommend the show. Or follow us on Twitter. Or us and if you don't Google like Plus. us, follow us on Twitter. Tell us why. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you guys. Thanks. Th thank you very much. We'll catch you on the shows. Ha